In this video, we're just going to go over how to uh, write a situation for context. Um, in this case, we're trying to differentiate between linear and exponential growth or decay and uh, just write, a, write a, an equation for that scenario so that we can use it to solve the problem. So let's just look at a few examples. Um, each year, the local country club sponsors a tennis tournament. Play starts with 128 participants. During each round, half of the players are eliminated. So how many players remain after five rounds? Um, so we have to ask ourselves, is this linear or exponential growth? Well, the difference is, um, are we losing the same amount of players each time? So we're losing players, right? So we start with, start with 128. Each round, half the players are eliminated. So we lose half each time, right? So is half gonna be the same amount? Half of 128 is gonna be 64. Half of 64 is gonna be 32. Half of 32 is gonna be 16. So it's not gonna be the same amount each time. That tells us it's an exponential. Um, we need to find a way to say, take half of the players each time. So we know that y equals a times b to the x. We have some starting value, and then we're multiplying by another number some amount of times, right? So our starting value in this case, pretty simple because it says it starts with 128, right? So we know that the starting value is going to be 128 players, and then half of the players are eliminated each time. So how do I find one half of a number? You can divide by two. You can, but we want to multiply in this case. So the same as dividing by two is multiplying by one half. If you want to find a fraction of a number, you can just multiply by that fraction, and that's gonna um, that's gonna give you that fraction of it. So we can say that multiply by one half is gonna give me half of one twenty eight. So I can write an equation then. Y equals one twenty eight times one half and this needs to happen some amount of times so the exponent is going to say multiply by one half some amount of times and just to be clear let's go ahead and clarify what our variables are in this case y is going to be the number of participants right so the number of participants is 128 and then having for each round so that's going to be um, number of rounds for x and total participants left. <clears throat> All right. So then that makes it nice and easy because it says how many players remain after five rounds. We know x is the number of rounds, so we can just put five in for that. It's going to say start with 128, give me half five times. Find half five times is what that says. So if you type that in a calculator, um, that's going to tell you that there's four players left, right? Y is the number of participants left, Y equals four, so there's four players left. <clears throat> Next example, there are 100 pieces of popcorn in my movie popcorn bucket. If I eat 20 pieces per minute, how long until I have no popcorn left? So we have to ask ourselves, is this linear or is it exponential? So are we multiplying by something which is changing, or are we um, adding or subtracting something in which it's going to be the same amount each time? So it looks like 20 pieces per minute, that's not changing. It's not 20 pieces per one minute, 10 pieces for the next, 5 pieces for the next. It's 20 pieces for every minute, so that's linear. So in this case, we're starting with 100. We know linear equations are written by some x plus b where we have some starting value and we're going to add on a certain amount each time. So in this case, <clears throat> eat 20 pieces per minute. Um, I start with 100 pieces. So you can say that I start with 100 and then I eat. So we're not going to be adding on, we're going to be subtracting them, right? We lose 20 for every minute. So three, four, five minutes you would multiply by 20 to say how much how much we have left and that's going to give us however much popcorn we have so again let's declare our variables real quick 
So x is per minute because we're using 20 per minute. So that's the number of minutes. And then y is the total pieces of popcorn, right? So then it says, how long do we have no popcorn left? So if this is my equation, if you'd rather see it like y equals mx plus b, I'll write it like this. But that's all that's happening. We're starting with 100, we're losing 20 every minute. How long until I have no popcorn left? So which one of that? Is that a number of minutes or is that a total piece of popcorn? It says no popcorn left, so that's a total piece of popcorn. If I have none left, it should be zero negative 20x plus 100. So we just have to find out how many minutes it took to get to zero then, to get to no popcorn. Um, we just have to solve this. So we solve by subtracting 100 to get to cancel out this guy. Um, Got to do it to both sides. And then since we're multiplying negative 20 times x, we have to divide. Um, so that gives us 1x here and 5 on the other side. Well, 5 is the number of minutes, so it, that means we have no popcorn for 5 minutes. Okay, one more. Bacteria can multiply at an alarming rate when each bacteria splits into two new cells and thus doubling. If we start with only one bacteria, which can double every hour, how many bacteria will we have at the end of one day? So we're starting with one. They double every hour. How many at the end of one day? So <clears throat> starting with one can double every hour. Is this linear or exponential growth? Well, it says double. So we're talking one, two, four, eight, sixteen. This is not, this is a multiply by two kind of thing, right? We're not adding on, we're multiplying here. So this is exponential growth. So we know we're using y equals x, a times b to the x. Well, we're starting with 1. Our starting value is going to be 1. Um, and we're doubling. How do you double something? We can multiply by 2. So nice and quick there. We should have 1 times 2 to the x. <clears throat> Let's see. We have to say what is x and y. So, so we just look at this. It's, it's, we started with 1 bacteria, then we're doubling every hour, right? It says every hour. So x is going to be the number of hours that have passed. And then, so if we start with one and double every hour, that'll give us how many bacteria we have. So Y is gonna be the number of bacteria. So when it asks you how many bacteria will we have at the end of one day, um, is that a, a time or a number of bacteria? That's a time. It says number of hours pass though. So one day is 24 hours, right? So we'll say one times two to the 24, because it's number of hours. In one day, 24, 1 times 2 to the 24th. you got to plug that in your calculator and we'll figure it out. So you plug that in your calculator and it tells me that I have 16,777,216 bacteria after one day if it's doubling every hour for 24 hours. Even if we start with one.